praise the Lord. Brother Clinton here once again. Welcome back to the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. Um, you're here watching this video because of the title, and that's a good thing. And before I get into this, I want to let you know that this is a Christian ministry, if you're not familiar with this ministry. And the I want to talk to you a little bit about the comment form just before I continue. The comment form on this channel is for people who are trying to grow, or desirous to grow in the Word of God, to comment or ask questions regarding the message in the video or the Word of God. That's what the comment section here is for. It's not a social network for people to have conversations with each other. And it's not a place for people to express their opinions about God's Word uh, if they don't believe God's Word. And it's also not a, a forum for people to express their opinions that include foul language or reference to sexual acts or body parts or things like that. I think we all understand without me going into any more detail. We all know how to act like ladies and gentlemen, even though some of us don't do that at times. We all know how to, right? So let's do that, and it'll make this this comment forum and this, this ministry a much better place to visit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So having said that, I want to speak to you about, well, I kind of have to speak to you about um, the subject of the temptation of uh, pornography and masturbation. That's not something that I'm comfortable saying in public, and it's not something that I'm comfortable speaking about in public. But it is something that I have uh, been compelled to make a public video about because the frequency of people that are writing to me about this and asking me about it has just become so great that it has become you know, superfluous for me to write an email to everybody that asks me about this. And so I intend to make a brief um, but comprehensive video message about this subject. A young man wrote to me, a brother in Christ, and he is struggling with this, the, the sin of pornography and masturbation. And he called it an addiction. It's not an addiction. I'm going to get into that in a couple of minutes. But it is a very serious problem. And it is a problem that affects everybody in these last days. Everybody that has access to a cell phone and an internet connection has access to the most vile filth that could ever be distributed among CD communities of adults and um, that's part of the challenge that we have in front of us in this 21st century uh, in this age of, of technology and communication so you know the internet is, is can be used as a blessing like I'm using it and you're using it right now but it can also be very dangerous and that's why the web is called the web and I, as I've said many times there's only two kinds of animals in the web there's the spider and there's the food See, and that's why it's called the web. So we have to be very careful, very discerning when we get on the internet. And we also have to very, be very defensive because if you're crawling around in a web, um, guess who's crawling around in the web also? The spider, and she's hungry. And so that beast is always trying to, um, to destroy the lives of people, the souls of Christians especially. This is why the scripture says, that your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's what we're going to talk about. So if you have your Holy Bible, King James Version, which is the Word of God for those of us who speak English, let's open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'd really like to have you um, read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Actually, the whole letter of 1 Corinthians would be great if you would read that so that you would have the context. But um, for sake of time, I'm not going to go into all that right now. I'm just going to concentrate on 1 Corinthians 10, 13. But I just want to summarize briefly before I do that. The reason that Paul says what he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is because he was talking about the various sins that the people of Israel committed under the ministry of Moses in the wilderness. And that when we look at those people, when we read about them in the scripture, and we see the various sins that they committed, we should never look at them as if we were haughty and, and higher than they are or better than they were because we're not. And the moment that we think that we are better than they were, we begin to fall. And so for that reason, let me just read to you verses 11 and 12. It says, Now all these, ha excuse me, now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Admonition is a word that means warning. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. 
Praise the Lord. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Praise the Lord. So, we live in a time when, just like I said a few minutes ago, when anybody with a cell phone and an internet connection can access the most vile filth that is spread uh, among the seediest of adult communities. And so, we need to be on guard, okay? Not only do we need to be on guard if we're parents, and that's a whole different subject, which I'm not really going to address in this video. But um, if you're parents, your children should not be walking around with a cell phone and access to an internet connection. Definitely not. If your children have a cell phone, that cell phone should be for them to contact you and for you to contact them. It should not have an internet connection. If your child has a phone with an internet connection, you are in error, period. And if you don't, if you don't agree with that, you, know, that's, you might say, well, that's your opinion, Brother Clinton. I feel very strongly about that. Okay, your child, if your child is a child, and he's living in your house or she's living in your house because they're not married yet and they don't have their own house yet, they should not have an internet connection, period. Okay, if they need to use an internet connection, they should be able to use yours under your supervision when you are watching. Um, if you have a child who has a phone and that phone has an internet connection, that is irresponsible of you, period, end of story. That's I have no apology for that. Um, moving on. Um, that which has take overtaken you, those of you who are struggling with this sin of, of pornography and masturbation, that which has come to you and, and, and overtaken you is, it, it's that temptation that has taken you is common to all men. Okay, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. This is something that you need to realize. Okay, And again, this message is for Christians. If you're not a Christian and you're listening, praise the Lord, that's wonderful. But... This message is for Christians. There is no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man, which means that the same temptation that has taken you it has taken all other men. All. There is no man in this world that has not been taken by the temptation of pornography and masturbation. There is not a man in this world. Okay, There was one, Jesus Christ. He's gone and ascended into heaven. Other than him, there is none. Okay. Um, it has, it has happened to you, whoever you are. It has happened to you. And so there, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's important to understand this because this particular sin is one that, that remember we said how they, that your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour? One of his most popular tactics, popular, no, I should say, one of his favorite tactics is to get you isolated. Okay, because when you're isolated, then you're away from your brethren, you're away from sound counsel, you're away from fellowship, and your faith wanes, and your your confidence in, 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 in Jesus Christ, and not your confidence in Jesus Christ, your confidence in your own righteousness in Christ begins to wane, and when he can get you off in a corner by yourself away from the other sheep, then it's easier to continually attack you until you are not a threat to him anymore. Pornography and masturbation is a good way for him to do that because it's it's a thing that is not really acceptable in public, although everybody knows about it. Um, which reminds me of an old song, an old heavy metal song that I used to listen to. It's, it was called "Spreading the Disease," um, and I shouldn't quote from heavy metal songs, forgive me. But uh, there's a lot of them in my mind from the past, and a lot of them had some some really very valuable themes about the new world order and, and things that were you know taking over at that time and at this time as well. Um, you know, I grew up on 80s metal, and uh, there was a lot of it that I didn't really understand at the time that I understand now because I know the scripture. Uh, praise the Lord. But I digress. This sin is, is one that will try to get you off into a corner so that you're not fellowshipping with your brethren anymore, so that you hide it from people because it's a shameful thing to, to admit and there are some of you who have been courageous enough to admit it in private conversation with me and ask me my counsel about it. And that's a wise thing for us to, you know, to confess our faults one to another and pray for one another that we may be healed. Um, 
that's a good thing. Many of you don't. Many of you don't. And because you don't, you keep isolating yourself more and more, and then you keep doing that sin more and more, and you your your breastplate of righteousness breaks down. If you don't know about the breastplate of righteousness, refer to the sixth chapter of Corinthians and the armor of God. Excuse me, the sixth chapter of Ephesians, and uh, the armor of God. And part of the armor of God is your breastplate of righteousness. Your breastplate, if you're a soldier, is that part of your armor that covers your internal organs and it, and it protects you from swords and from arrows and from spears and darts and rocks and whatever else. And if your breastplate is not on firmly or if it's cracked or if it's broken right down the middle, then you are vulnerable and somebody can stick his sword right you know, into your heart or into your liver and take your life, your enemy. And so um, you need to have your breastplate on firmly, and the devil knows this, and he knows that if you don't have your breastplate on firmly, then you're no threat to him anymore. And that's what he enjoys. He enjoys it when you're no threat to him anymore. So this is the situation, brothers and sisters. Pornography is an evil that has permeated all of society. I don't, I, you know, I've only been alive for a short 54 years on this planet, but I, as far as I know, I don't think there has ever been a time since man was on the earth that the filth that is pornography and many other forms of filth that are spread via the internet as well have been so widely available. Never, to my knowledge, never has there been a time in history, even in the days of Enoch and Noah, never has there been a time in history when so many people could access so much sinful filth so easily and so readily. And because of that, it is a plague. And it is, it is rampant. And, it, and, and most of the people that it has affected won't tell anybody about it or ask anybody for counsel about it. So that's why I'm making a public video. Because you can watch this video without anybody else knowing that you're watching this video. It's just between you, me, and God. In this case, not even between you, me, and God, because I don't even know who you are. It's just between you and God. Okay, pornography. Okay, having said that, having said all that about about what it is and 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 you know the nature of what it is and how it has spread to just about everywhere in the world and even children, little children can watch it. And nowadays, in the in the public school system, which sodomites have have uh, infiltrated because of the communist agenda, uh, which I won't go into in detail here, but. Um, your, the, the state has invented your public school system, and they invented it for a reason, to make your children stupid and to make them antichrist. And in the public school system, which they have allowed the sodomites to infiltrate, the teachers are now speaking to little children, like six and seven years old, about sexual acts that they have never even, uh, they, they would never even imagine if, some, if a grown-up wasn't talking to them about it. And because they are talking to them about these sexual acts and teaching them about masturbation and about other sorts of sexual acts, which I won't go into now, but um, these children are now thinking about things that they would never normally have thought of at that age. And some of them would never have thought about those things ever. And now, when they go home, or when they're on the bus, or when they're out on the playground, or whatever, and they have their phone, they can access images of actors that work for Satan doing the things that their teachers have talked to them about. And it's really, really a dangerous situation, warping the minds of little children and causing them to become accustomed and comfortable, accustomed to and comfortable with things that are abhorrent. Okay, so Brother Clint, what can I do to be delivered from the sin of pornography and masturbation. Okay, that's what I want to talk to you about right now. If you're not married and you don't have someone with you with which you can share your intimate desires and you have been tempted by the sin of pornography and masturbation and you have been knocked down, run over, and you are laying on the battlefield with all of your armor scattered all over the ground all around you and you are and despondent and you feel like you just can't go on, you feel like you just can't make it into the kingdom of God. You, you feel like, you know, if I repent of this again, if I ask the Lord to forgive me again, I know that I'm just going to wind up doing it again. So what's the point? Why don't I just give up? That's exactly where Satan wants you to be. That's exactly where the devourer 
wants you to be. So you need to stand up, my brother and my sister. I need to talk to you about a few things. Number one, the flesh is vile. The flesh is vile. See this flesh? It's vile. Okay? You have flesh just like I have flesh. What happens if you don't wash it for 24 hours? It smells really bad. It smells really bad and nobody wants to even sit next to you. Okay? Because it's vile. Okay? If I may be so, so bold... You know, when you ease yourself abroad, when you use the restroom and that which comes forth from you, we're very blessed today to have indoor plumbing so that it can be, you know, um, uh, gotten rid of. It can be evacuated very quickly. But, you know, if it's not evacuated very quickly, it's not a, something that you want to be around. Well, that's part of the inside of your flesh. You see, this flesh is vile. If you were to take this flesh and cut it in half, you would see and smell and and experience things that would probably either make you pass out or vomit okay and I'm not, I know I'm being graphic right now and I'm doing it on purpose if you were to be in an operating room and see a cesarean section where a doctor takes a knife to a pregnant woman's belly and he cuts her open cuts the skin then he cuts the muscle and then he cuts the uterus and there's a child inside there covered in its own blood most people wouldn't even be able to remain standing if they were to see that okay that's the flesh it smells bad, it is disgusting to look at, and that is why God gave us skin. Thank God He gave us skin. Praise the Lord. It is flesh. Okay. Um, sometimes over the past several years, now this is just me, okay? this doesn't have to be you, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but this is just me. Um, sometimes over the past couple of decades, when I have had that temptation to, you know, to lust after strange flesh, to look at pornography, um, what I would do is pull out or pull up a picture of dead bodies, um, dismembered bodies, heads without bodies, bodies without heads, arms and legs, bomb blast scenes, um, you know, uh, failed terrorist plots or things like that. I mean, I'm not saying that you pull those things up if you don't want to. You don't have to do this. I'm not suggesting that you do this. This is just something that, that I personally devised a long time ago, to remind myself of the fact that the flesh is vile. You see, it doesn't matter. I, as a man, am, can be tempted by the, the flesh of a woman. Okay? That's, and God knows this. The Scripture says very, very, very much about it. And Satan knows this as well. And that's why he uses women to tempt men. And that flesh, I came to realize a long time ago, that flesh is flesh. It doesn't matter how it looks on the outside. It's still the same on the inside. The flesh of a, a cute little Barbie doll type, you know, teenage girl is the same as the flesh of a big, you know, overweight female bodybuilder. It's the same flesh. You see, it's just a different shape. And it's packed into, a lot of times, it's packed into really tight clothes to show off places that aren't supposed to be exposed in public in order to tempt men. You see, and when you become tempted by that, then what helps me is to think about the fact, put myself in remembrance of the fact that the flesh is vile. And for me personally, I reflect on images that I have seen of dismembered bodies. Okay, Now, I'm not saying that you have to do that, or I'm not suggesting that you do that. For me, that works, but for you, maybe you can think about something else that, that is along those same lines to let you, to put you in remembrance that the flesh is vile, okay? If you look at, at some girl walking down the street half naked and she, she is tempting to you, think about what that flesh is going to look like when it has been roasted in the fire. When the fire from God, think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, when, when all the women and the men were running around half naked and they were all rich and, and, and you know, had everything that they had need of and they were all taking baths together and having orgies together and having parades in the street half naked and all that stuff. Think about how all those beautiful people looked when the, when the fire and brimstone began to come down from heaven and, they, and their faces were pale and they were screaming for their lives trampling over one another and trying to get the fire off of their bodies. And after they were all in a heap of burning, stinking, rotting flesh and all that, that beautiful hair was burned off of them and all their beautiful clothes were burned off of them and they were nothing but a mass of rotting, stinking, burnt 
flesh. How beautiful were they then? Think about those things. Think about those things. It is the same flesh. And that is how the fornicators of this world are going to be in the end. When the judge casts them into the fire of hell, that beautiful blonde with the, with the, you know, the Barbie doll body, she's not going to have that blonde hair anymore. She's not going to have that anymore. She's not going to have that Barbie doll body anymore. She's going to be a rotting, stinking, blackened, screaming mass of burning flesh. It's just that simple. So that is something that, that I use in order to remind myself of the reality of the nature of the flesh. The flesh is vile. And people have the habit of, because of the teaching of Satan today, through the television, the music industry, the inter entertainment industry, and all that, to pack their flesh into really, really tight clothes and to do certain things and go certain places and act in certain ways to tempt one another. More so than not, it's women tempting men, but it's, it goes the other way around as well. Women can be tempted by ungodly men as well. And um, <clears throat> so that's the temptation. The, 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 the place that God has given us a provision to escape it in is what I've just been describing to you. And let me just go back to 1 Corinthians 10 and, and remind you of what Paul said. He said, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So my brothers and my sisters, you don't have an addiction. You don't have an addiction. What you have is the flesh, the lust of the flesh. That's not an addiction. It's something that is common to every man. Okay. Now some people may experience it at greater levels than others, but everybody has it. It is a temptation that is common to all men. But God is faithful, who will, uh, excuse me. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Now this is God's word. He says, he will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Which means that if you are tempted, you are not being tempted above that you are able. You're not being tempted so much that you cannot escape it. Even though it might seem that way at the time, you're not. And when you're tempted, your flesh gets all sorts of tickly feelings in it, and your flesh starts to say, you know, we don't want to think about the word of God right now. We just want to do what we want to do. But you see, you have to put the body under subjection. And you have to say, um, excuse me, flesh, you're not my God. Jesus Christ is my God. And the, and the scripture says the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And this is how we cast down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought into captivity to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, to obedience of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So just like any other temptation, we need to cast down ungodly thoughts, thoughts that are, that are not according to God's word, and we need to replace them with God's word, just like our master did when the, when the tempter came to him when he was hungry. He hadn't eaten for 40 days, and the tempter came to him and said, See that rock over there? Turn it into bread if you're the Son of God. He could have done that, but he didn't do that, because he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. Now, how did Jesus know that that was written? How did Jesus know that it was written in the scripture, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Because he read the scripture. Because he read the scripture. All of his life, he read the scripture, and he believed it and obeyed it. He's God's son. And so when the tempter came to him with a temptation, Jesus recognized the temptation, and he replaced it with the word of God. He took out his sword and did battle, in other words. And so can you do, my brother or my sister. You don't have to give in to the sin of temptation, the sin of pornography, the sin of masturbation, which leaves you afterward saying to yourself, Oh my God, how could I have done that? How could I have done that? I knew that it was wrong. But my flesh didn't want to hear that it was wrong at the time. My flesh just wanted to say, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, let's just do this. Listen, you need to take control of your flesh. You are a Christian. 
a man or a woman of God. You have the, the power and the ability and the commandment to control your flesh. And if you will say to your flesh, no, the word of God says this, then your flesh will be put under subjection. If your flesh says, oh, oh, I want to do this and that with that girl or with that man or whatever, and you say to your flesh, excuse me, it is written, the body is not for fornication, the body is for the Lord. It is written, thou shalt not commit adultery. It is written, I will set no unclean thing before mine eyes. And keep speaking the word of God to your flesh until your flesh says, yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. You can put your flesh under subjection. You can. And you must. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Now, now that I have stressed that to you, and that's really all there is to it. That's really all there is to it. Put yourself in remembrance of what the flesh actually is. Because if the flesh is being paraded in front of you as something desirable, strange flesh is being paraded in front of you as something desirable, it's because you are, it's a deception to cause you to desire something that you shouldn't, and you have to put yourself in remembrance of what the flesh actually is. All right, it's just like if you're a man and some woman, you know, say you're a soldier in the army, okay, and, and, and uh, a very common uh, tactic in, in the military is to use a woman uh, as an intelligence officer to extract intel intelligence from men that would otherwise not give it up. Okay, and so some woman says, I love you, baby. You're the greatest. I've been searching for you all my life. You're just perfect in every way. And she says all these things to you and flatters you. And, and uh, that's a temptation for you to, if you're a soldier, to give up information that you shouldn't be giving up. Or, you know, if you're a soldier of Jesus Christ, it's a temptation to you to, uh, to be unfaithful to your wife. Or just, even if you're not married, to be unfaithful to God. But... You need to be able to recognize that temptation. You need to be able to recognize that flattery for what it is. Because that person that is flattering you is a flesh body. It is a flesh and bone person. And that flesh that that woman is tempting you with is vile, rotting, stinking, dying flesh. And although it is pampered and washed and perfumed and, and, and dressed up in, in beautiful clothing at the time to make it attractive to you, do you know what it is? It's meat. Go to the butcher shop. Go to the butcher shop. There's another good example. Go to the butcher shop and look at the meat there. That's what it is. It's flesh. Meat and flesh are two synonyms. They're synonyms. They mean the same thing. Meat and flesh. Okay. When you go to, go to the butcher shop and look at the meat there. Okay, I can go to the butcher shop here in, in Costa Rica. We can see a head of a pig sitting right there in the, under the glass. You know? you know, a few days ago that pig was probably named Carlos or whatever, and he was probably hanging around, you know, on the farm. And now, who knows where his body is, but his head is right there under the glass. And we can look at it. You can see his eyeballs there staring right at you. I have no idea why people want to see that here. Um, but it's a good example that I can present to you that that is flesh. Okay? It, that is flesh. So you need to remember what the flesh is. That's number one. Number two, you need to remember that you have everything that you have need of to combat the temptation that has come to you. Whatever temptation has come to you, it is a temptation that is common to all men. It has happened to everybody else. It's not in a form, it didn't come to you in a, in a form any greater than it has come to anybody else. Okay? No temptation has taken you, but that such as is common to man but God is faithful. God is faithful, my brother, my sister. God is faithful. God has not delivered you from the power of darkness in order to leave you subject to a, sp uh, a specific portion of the darkness that you just can't conquer. It may seem that you just can't conquer it, but you can. You just need to know how and apply yourself to do it. The flesh is vile. Okay, so you need to recognize what the flesh is. You need to recognize the fact that God has given you power over this temptation and made a way to escape. And he, the way to escape is right there in front of you with the temptation. And the way to escape is to recognize what that flesh is and then remember the word of God and speak the word of God to your flesh. Even as Jesus Christ spoke the word of God to the enemy, the devil, Okay, and when he said it is not, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now get thee behind me. You have the power to do this. 
Okay, and the third thing that is so very important, and, and it's not necessarily third in order of importance, it's just the third thing in, in the order of what I'm speaking, is that you need to stay in the Word of God. My brother, my sister, you need to stay in the Word of God. Now, the, the fact that you and I are, are able to communicate right now via this video is a wonderful thing. Okay, it's a wonderful thing. And I'm not discouraging you at all from watching the videos on this channel. However, I'm about to tell you something that might sound kind of contradictory. Turn off YouTube. Turn it off. If you're watching this on your phone, if you're watching it on your computer, whatever you're doing, turn it off. And keep it off. And open your Bible. And get in the Word of God. You know, listening to these messages, it can bless you, it can strengthen you. And listening to me speak the Word of God to you is a blessing, and it, and it will definitely not return void. But there is no substitute for you and God one-on-one -on -one together with no interruptions and nobody else around, with no electronic devices turned on, reading His Word, talking to Him about His Word, asking Him questions about His Word, and getting answers from Him directly. There is no substitute for that. And I was just telling that to a sister today who was asking me about, you know, her, she's about to be baptized soon in a Pentecostal church, and she was asking me about some of the differences between those of us who are in the faith of Jesus Christ and those of us uh, who are still in the Pentecostal church. And I told her, as I'm always telling you all, all the time, the only way that you are going to know whether I am telling you the truth or whether any man is telling you the truth is to know the truth for yourself. That's the only way. Are you listening? There is no other way. You're not going to be persuaded of the truth by, um, how should I say this? You're not going to have a living revelation of the truth in you so that no man can move you from it by watching YouTube videos. It's not going to happen. Wait a minute. You didn't hear what I just said. It's not going to happen. The only way that you are going to have inside of you a living revelation of the truth so that no man can move you from it is by abiding in the truth and knowing the truth for yourself. The only way that you are going to be prepared to do battle against your adversary, as our Lord Jesus Christ was prepared to do battle against our, our common foe, the tempter in the wilderness, is to stay in the scriptures to know the word of God for yourself. Stop reading online articles about the Word of God. Stop watching Word Pro excuse me, not, I, don't, I don't want to say stop watching Word Prophet videos, but stop watching YouTube videos. Stop it. Stop staying up until 1 or 2 or 3 in the morning in front of the blue glow of your telephone or your computer screen watching YouTube videos. Turn it off. That is making you weak. What you need is something to make you strong. Staying in front of your computer so that the blue glow is on, is on your face from your computer or your telephone all night long is dangerous for a couple of reasons. And this is the most important part of this whole video message. You know, this isn't a periscope. This is my co-pilot, Raquel. Huh. Um, thanks. What was I thinking? <laughs> it's, it's very dangerous to you for at least two reasons. Number one, because it can't give you that living revelation that can only come from God. It can't give you that. I'm speaking to you the Word of God right now, and it will not return void, and it is powerful. But it is not, excuse me, but it is not nearly as powerful as you turning off this computer, your computer right now, and getting alone with God in a quiet room and opening His Word and reading His Word and having communion and fellowship with Him, spending time in His presence. Okay? That's number one. Number two, the more time that you are on the internet, obviously, the more time that you are going to be exposing yourself to potential temptation. The more time that your computer is on, that's more time that you are potentially going to be tempted by something that you don't want to see. That your flesh wants to see, but you don't want to see it. Because every time that you click on this or click on that, there's going to be, even if you're watching this video right now, off to the right-hand side, there are suggested videos on YouTube. 
And if you've ever watched anything in, in time past that was something that you shouldn't be watching, then YouTube knows that, Google knows that, and they're going to suggest those things to you. And so you're watching me preach the, the Word of God to you, and Google is suggesting to you over on the right-hand side that you watch you know, some um, videos about women in Russia with big breasts or something like that, whatever it might be, you know. And so you need to get off of the computer. That is so very important. Get off of the computer. You know, I know I, I, I've said this before publicly. I, I have a brother. I'm not going to mention his name, but you know, he's a young brother. He's in his 20s, and he loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all of his heart. And, you know, he, he lived on a property where his parents lived. He had a trailer, and he lived on, uh, he still has a trailer, but he doesn't live there anymore. But he lived on his parents' property. And it came to pass that he was experiencing such strong temptation from having an internet connection in his trailer that he decided to cut off the internet connection from his trailer and just go to his parents' house on the same property to use the internet when he needed to use the internet. And that way he didn't have that temptation in his trailer. As the scripture says, make no provision for the flesh. And if you are on your computer all night long, what are the chances that you're, that you're going to wind up watching something that you shouldn't be watching. One thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and pretty soon you're watching something that you know you shouldn't be watching. And the reason is, the reason is because all that time you should have been reading the scripture with your computer turned off. You need to recognize, my brother, my sister, that your computer, your telephone, is a tool for you to communicate with people that you want to communicate with when you need to communicate with them. You weren't paying attention at all. Let me say that again. Your computer, your device, your tablet, your phone, whatever it is that you have, is a tool for you to use to communicate with people that you want to communicate with when you want to communicate with them. It is not intended to be your master, okay? It was intended by the, by the beast who sold it to you to become your master. But for you, for all intents and purposes concerning you, that device is not supposed to be your master because no man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other or he will cleave to the one and despise the other. You see, and if, you're, and if Jesus Christ is your master, then your communication device, whatever it may be, computer, tablet, telephone, whatever, if Jesus Christ is your master, then you com th your communication device is for you to use at your convenience to communicate with people that you want to communicate with when you want to communicate with them, and the rest of the time it is turned off. But if your computer or your phone or whatever is turned on all the time, and especially if you're on a, you know, a, a dangerous network like Facebook, and you're always getting, you know, I, there's a video on this channel about Facebook. If you're a Christian, you have no business being on Facebook. Unless, okay, you, some of you tell me, well, I just use Facebook for the specific purpose of preaching the Word of God. Praise the Lord, okay? I'm not going to tell you that you can't preach the Word of God on Facebook. But Facebook is very dangerous because you're always getting notifications of people that, you know, are giving you a like or a thumbs up or whatever they do on Facebook. And and you're always getting notifications. It's always, it's it's distracting you. It's always trying to grab your attention, to try to keep your device on, to try to keep your computer on, to try to keep you out of the Word of God, to try to keep you off of your knees. Well, I really want to go to prayer right now, but what if this guy responds, or what if this, what if somebody responds to my message, or whatever? I gotta, I gotta get that, you know, that like, or that dislike, or that bing, or whatever it is they call it on Facebook. I don't know. You need to turn it off. You need to turn it off. This is probably the most important part of this entire message, my brother, my sister. The reason, there's many reasons, but, but more so than ever, more so than anything, the reason that you have gotten tripped up in the, in the sin of pornography and masturbation is because your device, your, your phone, your computer, whatever it is, was left on too long and you continued to watch video after video after video until you followed the distractions to the point where they brought you to the devil's neighborhood where you knew you shouldn't be in the first place. So turn it off. Turn it on when you need to communicate with somebody. Turn it on when you purpose to do something 
And then when you have done what you have purposed to do, turn it off. This is the most important advice that I can give you. Turn it off. It should only be on when you are using it for your purpose. And when your purpose has been accomplished, turn it off. That is going to save you a lot of trouble, my brothers and my sisters. So recognize what the flesh truly is. Recognize that you have the power over the temptation if you will just take the authority and speak the word of God against the temptation and take control over your flesh. Stay in the word of God. Stay in the word of God. That is what will sanctify you. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The more that you stay in the word of God, the more that everything is, that is contrary to the word of God will be pushed out of you and away from you. Okay? And number four, number four, <laughs> turn it off. Turn off your device. It, is, it can be a great blessing. Turn it on and use it when you need to use it for what you need to use it for, and then turn it off. Because if you don't, it will draw you into the, you know, Alice's wonderland of, you know, this and that and the other thing. And it's so easy to click on YouTube video after YouTube video because Google has all these suggested videos right there in your, in your eyesight. When you're looking at the video that you're there looking at, there's already other videos that you, that you don't need to watch being suggested to you by Google. He's like, here, here, watch this, watch this. And then when you watch that, there's another one that's a little bit closer to pornography that's being suggested to you. Watch this. Watch this. It's just, it's only 10 minutes. Watch it. Watch it. That's what Google is saying to you. And then when you watch that, then there's another one and another one. And pretty soon, you're watching what you don't want to watch. You're doing what you didn't have any intention of doing when you got on the internet in the first place. And in a few minutes, you're going to be laying down on the floor, ashamed before, before the living God, having sinned against him, because you wandered off into the devil's neighborhood where you had no business being. If you are on the internet, be on the internet for what you need to do, and then turn it off. Turn it off. Turn the power button off. You don't, you don't, you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm not saying just you know set it down and walk away from it. I'm saying turn it off. So that there are no notifications. Well, Brother Clinton, what if somebody, what if this person calls me or messages me? Really? Seriously? Up until like 10 or 15 years ago, if somebody wanted to call you, you had to be home to answer the phone. And you could turn your the ringer on your phone off. Okay, if somebody wants to call you or message you and you're busy at the time, you're busy. Okay, you'll get back to them when you decide to turn your device back on and check your messages. You don't have to be in constant communication with everybody in the world 24-7. You have the power to turn it off. I should make a separate video about this just called Turn It Off. But I've spoken about this many times in many videos on this channel. It is so very important and I can't stress it enough and that's why I've said it about a jazillion times in this video. If there is such a word, turn it off. If you're going to use the internet, if you're going to use your phone, use it for what you need to use it for, and then turn it off right away. And open your Bible and spend time there. Well, Brother Clinton, I just, you know, I, I start to feel like I'm going to fall asleep. Well, then stand up and walk around. You know, slap yourself in the face if you need to. You know, wake up, flesh. It's time to wake up. Wake up. You know, pinch yourself. Wake up, flesh. <laughs> you know, you can do it. It's just a matter of you taking the initiative to do it. Of course, your flesh is not going to want to get in the Word of God. It'll start yawning. It'll start feeling like it wants to fall asleep. Take control of it. Take control of it. Sometimes you might have to starve it. Fast for a little while. Fast. Yes, actually not eat for like an entire day or two or three. Sometimes you might have to do that. It's part of your life as a Christian. But you need to subdue the flesh and you need to stay in the word of god you need to recognize the flesh for what it is the flesh is vile the flesh is rotting and stinking it's awful now i'm not i'm not saying that you should think of these things when it comes to your spouse because that would kind of destroy your intimacy but as far as anything other than your spouse you need to recognize that strange flesh is exactly what the bible says it is it is vile the flesh is vile and it profiteth nothing the flesh profiteth nothing 
Something that profiteth nothing is something that is completely worthless. And why would you spend your time wrestling around and, 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 and desiring something that is completely worthless? It profiteth nothing. But what profits? Godliness. Godliness is profitable. Hallelujah. The Bible says bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and also of that which is to come. Abide in the Word of God. You're like, Brother Clinton, how do you know all the Scripture? I don't. I didn't. I didn't take a magic course one day and said, you know, pay fifty nine ninety five with you know Bob's magic Bible memory course. You know, in only three weeks you can know all the Scripture. How do you, how do I know the Scripture? I spend time in the Scripture. It's just that it's just it's just that simple. That's how you get to know the Scripture. That's how you have the Scripture in your heart and in your mouth, spending time in it. And there's so many of us that just marvel at that nowadays. How do you find the time to do it? Everybody has 24 hours every day. You have 24 hours every day just like I do. It's just a matter of how you use the time. And your communication device has been wasting your time, stealing your time on purpose. That's part of the reason that it was given to you by the beast. So turn it off. Stay in the Word of God. Turn it off. That's how you overcome. Pornography and masturbation is not an addiction. Okay? It is the result of a natural desire that is in you that needs to be met in different ways. And you need to turn off your device so that you're not making attempt so that you're not making any provision for the flesh. And you need to spend it, be, and you need to be spending that time in the Word of God. Period. End of story. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this message be a blessing to those of you who have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.